Good afternoon and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 7th of February 2020 and the time has just gone 12.25 GMT. Uh, and I'm looking ahead to next week, which is Monday the 10th until Friday the 14th of February. Now it is worth pointing out, I'm recording this, this webinar about, or this video rather, about an hour in advance of the US non-farm payroll support. So some of the numbers and in terms of levels, price action referred to might be out of date. Um, depending on how the numbers come in. Um, before we kind of run through what the big events of next week are, let's take a look at the big events of this week. Uh, and essentially, the kind of main story in town has been, unfortunately, the coronavirus situation has been getting worse. Um, Chinese stock markets reopened on Monday. There was an initial massive sell-off, but the, uh, the authorities in Beijing were quick to step in. Um, the, the Chinese Central Bank, uh, stepped in by in, uh, injecting liquidity into the markets. They also, the, uh, the regulators took action in, in terms of tighter rules on short selling and on top of that restrictions were placed on fund managers in relation to offloading uh, big positions. So with that we saw a decent rebound in Asian, European and US stock markets. So you can see here this is the price action on the FTSE this week decent move to the upside. It's we gained a fair bit of the ground that has been lost uh, in the last few weeks. We're currently above this blue line here, the 50 moving average. Uh, and if we're, if we're there, they're about so we're pretty much trading ever so slightly below it rather. We're in, in that zone. If we can get back above it, uh, we could that could be a sign that the kind of wider upward trend is going to continue because other markets such as the DAX, the S&P 500 and the Nikkei 225, which should come on to a second, are all doing much better. If you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 7,600. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the, the uh, mid January highs. On the flip side, if markets turn sharply lower again we, and we break below this red line here, the Trinity moving average at 7,364, we could be looking at retesting this area here, uh, the lows of late January. Now, to be fair to it, the FTSE is probably, um, has. It's probably the weakest of the bunch in terms of the big markets. So if we take a look at what's going on here over in Germany on the DAX, we can see that the all-time high was achieved in late January, mid to late January. And if you look at the levels that we're currently at, not too far away from the all-time high. So the, the DAX has recouped nearly all the ground that lost on the back of the health crisis. If you continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the record, the record high in this zone here, in around 13,640, there thereabouts. Uh, but if you do see any move to the downside, support could be found from this blue line, the 50 moving average, and that comes into play just south of 13,300. Also, there's some consolidation in this, in this zone at 13,200. That area might act as support. And even if you go below that, uh, this the kind of big psychological 13,000 could act as support. Should we see fairly, move, fairly large moves to the downside? The US markets have been in great shape, a series of record highs being racked up. They quickly kind of shook off the fears uh, surrounding the coronavirus situation, even though on a health-wise, tragically, things are actually getting worse. But because of the intervention by the Chinese authorities, and also we had the Chinese uh, government announcing plans to lower tariffs on U.S. imports worth $75 billion worth of imports, that will come into play uh, next week. Um, that also added to the upwards, upward move uh, in, Euro in Asian, European, and U.S. stocks. So... Yesterday we saw the S&P 500 hit a record high. That'll give you an indication of how, how strong sentiment is. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 3,340, 50, 60, so on and so forth. Uh, any moves to the downside could find some support from this zone here at 3,300. Seems to be near a, a consolidation. And even if you go below that, the 50 moving average, which nicely acted as support uh, last week, could act, potentially act as support again. Let's take a look at what's going on over the Far East with Japan. It's a similar story with the Nikkei 225, whereby it had a very aggressive sell-off on the back of the health fears, but between the intervention and the, and the uh, between the, the, the reaction from the Chinese authorities has helped helped uh, the stock market in Japan pull back almost all the ground or most of the ground that it's lost. So you can see here the levels of rash um, that were achieved yesterday, not too far away from the highs of um, of, of, of January. So if we could press on higher from here on the Nikkei 225, should we take out the highs that were achieved 
in mid-December and also January with Cuba Lincoln targeting 24,474. Any moves to the downside might find some support from this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes to play at 23,622. And if you go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards the kind of psychologically important 23,000 level. Now, we've also had a fairly decent move in the US dollar this week. The US dollar index hit its highest level since late November, uh, and with that, we've seen downward pressure on euro dollar and also on, on pound dollar. And keep in mind, I'll come on to a bit more detail, but we have, we have um, growth figures from the UK and from the Eurozone, as well as Germany, uh, next week. So that's all of fair importance. So taking a look at Euro dollar, a lovely example of, of a downward trend. We've seen the lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and yet again, another lower low. We're back below the important one spot 10 level on Euro dollar. So if you, move any, if you keep moving lower, we could be looking at retesting the lows that we saw uh, in October. We'd really need to get back above the 50 moving average, or possibly even the 200 moving average, this red line here on Euro dollar to kind of then think, to actually begin to think, you know what, maybe the kind of recent up downward trend has come to an end. In relation to um, the pound versus the dollar, as I mentioned, we have some important economic indicators out of the UK and the US next week. We have uh, US CPI and retail sales which I'll run through when I go through my list of uh, week ahead items. So the British pound has, has been, broadly speaking, in a decent upward trend from uh, from, this, from, from, uh, from September onwards. But ever since they got the jolt higher on the back of the Conservative Party win at the election, uh, we've, given up, we've given up a fair bit of that ground. But if you can hold above this zone here in around 1 spot 29, we could see the wider upward trend continue. We could see it retaking the 50 moving average and a move beyond that could take us up towards 132. If we do have decent break below 1 spot 29, it could take us back to this zone here, the lows of uh, early November, or again, mid November, and that's in around 1 spot 2768. So, in relation to some of the big announcements of next week, uh, we have UK GDP, uh, preliminary GDP, coming out from the, um, from, the, uh, from the UK. We have US CPI numbers along with US retail sales. That's going to give us, give, give us an indication of demand in the, uh, in the UK. Um, in terms of other kind of important economic indicators, we have German GDP. We also have Eurozone GDP. Um, in terms of the, uh, corporate stories, uh, we have Barclays have full-year results. Royal Bank of Scotland have full-year uh, figures out, full-year figures. Full-year figures for Mercado, the online supermarket. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand uh, has an industry decision, and that's widely tipped to keep rates on hold. Dunelm have first half figures, and Centrica, the owner of British Gas, have first half have a uh, full year figures out rather. So, in relation to some of the stocks to keep an eye on next week, starting off with Barclays. So, Barclays share price has had a decent rebound, had a decent rebound from, from August into mid December. That was this jolt higher here was in the back of the uh, the Tory party winning the UK general election, but since then it's given up a fair bit of that ground, but notice how it's getting decent support from the 100 day moving average along here, and that comes into play uh, in around one spot six, one pound, 169 there thereabouts. If you can hold above that metric, it's likely that the kind of wider trend could continue, and we could be looking at retesting up, up towards 180, or potentially up to the highs that we're seeing in, uh, in, uh, in mid-December. If we do, on the other hand, have a break below the 30 moving average, we could take us back toward this red line, the 30 moving average, in around 160. Notice how it acted as resistance here in July, also in, in, in September, and acted as a bit of support in October. So the metric has been important in the past. It makes it more likely it will be important in the future. But obviously, there are no guarantees. Uh, also, taking a look at, uh, uh, taking a look at Royal Bank of Scotland, Royal Bank, similar scenario whereby they got a jolt higher on the back of the uh, the election result, but they've given up some of the, those gains. So this year is the, the the decent move to the upside on the back of the election, um, the, 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 well, the Tory party winning the UK general election. But with that, what we saw was the market moving a fairly fairly decent move to the downside, giving up a fair bit of those gains. We're trading in around the 30 moving average, uh, which comes into play in around two pounds and 18, 218 pence. We're just about holding above it. If we can get hold above it, we could we could continue in the kind of wider trend, or we could head towards the 240 zone. A bit of consolidation in around there. 
and beyond that could potentially take us up to the December highs. But if you do have a decent break below the 200 moving average, the risk red line, it could take us back toward the psychologically important 200 pence zone. And you can notice here there's some consolidation in that area back in September and also in, um, in October. I'm just coming on to my last uh, chart now. I'll finish in a high note. Dunelm. Uh, Dunelm, uh, the retailer, have been doing quite well, which, is, which puts it in a minority uh, of uh, retailers. It was only yesterday the share price hit um, in an all uh, yet another all-time high. We're not too far away from the all-time at the moment. That tells you everything you need to know about sentiment. If they continue to press on higher from here, because they're currently about £12 a share, we could be looking at targeting £13 a share. Uh, any move to the downside, could find some support in around this area here, uh, in around the um, in this zone here, in around at um, ten pounds ninety or eleven pounds. You can see that they see found some support in here. It acted resistance on the way up. Uh, it also coincides with this blue line here, the fifty moving average, which acted nicely as support in early December. So keep an eye on that. Uh, just keep keep up those prices in mind when you're looking at Dunelm's uh, numbers. Uh, that is all for me on this video. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good trading week and good luck.